Hey friends, welcome to the first lesson in Pro Workflow for Web Designers, and this is dealing with file organization. Now before I start, um, I just want to show you something kind of cool that I work with. It's a product called Total Finder, and it's kind of this adaptation for your regular Mac Finder if you use a Mac uh, that kind of allows you to have these tabbed windows um, of Finder, and I find it pretty awesome for being able to copy and paste things into different areas uh, on my computer. So Total Finder is what I use. You can use total regular Finder. It's really irrelevant, but I just wanted to show you that in case you got confused up front. Uh, you can find that at totalfinder.binaryage.com. Now for this whole course, I've developed this little fancy site, Holly's Ice Cream Parlor. Now Holly is actually my eight week old baby and you know, if I do everything right as a parent, hopefully she'll have her own ice cream parlor when uh, we're a little older. But so um, I just made this so that we can go through a couple different organizational things. And uh, some of the lessons are going to cover some things inside the PSD. Today, we want to start outside the PSD. We want to start with our files and our folders. Make sure that those are organized. So we're going to actually pan right back out here. Whenever you have artwork, I highly suggest that you put everything as far as client work and um, projects in a projects folder something that's uh, centrally located either in um, you know your, do your documents folder somewhere on your um, computer so that you're not searching over your desktop over your documents folder over uh, 10 different places just for different pieces of artwork so that's the first thing that I'd suggest making a central projects folder super easy super basic but not a lot of us do it <laughs> So we know that this is Holly's ice cream parlor. And for some reason, we've had the project name ice cream as the main root of the folder. Let's just make it Holly's so that Holly's ice cream, just so that we can make this a little more descriptive in case, you know, maybe we get a different ice cream uh, client down the road. So projects, Holly's ice cream. Now we have a whole bunch of files in here. It seems like some of these, if you look in the preview here, are some stock images and we got a whole bunch of PSDs I think we have one two three four five six seven of them we have a logo here that's just vector artwork it looks like and then of course we have a miscellaneous folder everybody has one of those and I've never gone back and actually taken things out of a miscellaneous folder I feel like you make one and then you never go back to it right and then there's always like the dreaded untitled folder you know that's always down at the bottom of every file uh, structure so what we want to do is just clean this up real quick and the way I do that is starting with um, just make a basic file um, structure just made out of your folders so we're going to create new folders and we know that we have some stock and some icons and some uh, looks like a vector logo there so we're just going to make an assets folder okay so that we know we're going to have we also want to do something where we separate out any of the design files and then if you're the one that's working on HTML and CSS later, you also want a um, directory for that. So let's make a UI folder, user interface folder. We're going to put our PSDs in there and then let's make one that's an HTML folder. So looking in the miscellaneous folder, it looks like somebody just put a whole bunch of these um, stock images which we already had. That can go in the trash, so let's just move that to trash. Same thing with the untitled folder, it never has anything in it. <laughs> so move that to trash as well. So now we have our folders here, and let's start sorting. It's real easy, real basic, but not a lot of us do it, and we just kind of pile everything in, in here. So we put our stock in there, uh, our vector logo is an asset, anything that goes into our PSD that lives outside of it is going to be an asset. And let's wow yeah there are a ton of seven of these psds we're going to put these in the ui folder okay now let's break this down even further so we have our assets folder we're going to need another folder inside there right and that's going to be for our stock we're going to make another folder again for icons just in case we have those down the road and we're going to make our last folder for logos we know that there's only one logo but should you get other vector artwork you can put it in there as well so let's just clean this up a bit and that goes in our stock now nice and neat you started out here a uh, holly's ice cream you went to your assets now somebody can find where the logo is pretty quick they can find where stock photography is very easy very clean 
Now, this is something that I employ as far as uh, versioning or keeping tabs on what kind of iteration I'm on for a certain uh, project. In your UI folder, here's all these PSDs. Let's take care of them in a second, but what I want to do is just make a V1 folder. So that means that at the very beginning of my project, I made a PSD, the very first one is going in there. Okay, so let's just put all these in here for now. And now let's start to clean them up. So if you're anything like me or you work with anybody like I've worked with, uh, what you're gonna find is you're gonna have a myriad of file descriptions. Um, awesome that they're somebody went in and put in some file names for this, but if you look at these, uh, I can start to show you some of the um, things that are uh, a little less than ideal about them. So the first one here, Holly Ice Cream underscore contact two, not too bad, um, but we're gonna get back to the fact that you should really only be working in one PSD if you can handle it. Um, unless you have a huge site that needs a lot of layouts and you can't handle it just because of file size or some other reason, you should really try to put your contact page, your home page, everything like that in one PSD. Okay, so now we have another one, Holly Ice Cream Home V1 Copy 2. <laughs> I mean, again, who knows what that is? Uh, we have a green highlighted one, we have a red highlighted one that says final. To me, I'm thinking the green one is the one that somebody wanted me to use, but I see the red one and it says final, so I'm thinking that's actually the one. So again, we have a little bit of confusion there. And then you have this one that people tend to put, use this one, like I'm just gonna go to that one first and say, oh, okay, that supersedes final or it supersedes something in green. So again, there's no system here. I mean, there's just tons of different ways of describing files and it just seems like a mess and I have no idea which one to open. Uh, again, menu, that's for the menu page on this website. And then we have the contact page. So it seems like it's getting out of hand. And then some people will even do this. They'll make the title of the project and then they'll put in a date that they've made it on. Now, if you use computers, <laughs> I mean, in general, I know the Mac OS does it and I'm sure Windows does too. You can find out when something was created or last opened, last modified. So to put a date on something kind of seems silly. So again, unless you found that that system absolutely works for you and your team, I would advise against that. So really, what I'm going to do is just trash all these because I know that we don't need them. The one that I know that we need is the last one at the bottom there, uh, just for our sample. Um, so the way I'm going to name this is really simple. All lowercase, and I'm going to use underscores instead of spaces. So Holly's Ice Cream. And then I'm going to label it something like uh, UI or design or visual or something to give some relevance as to what kind of PSD it is. So I'm going to say UI. So my file name is quite simple. Holly's Ice Cream UI. Deal. Okay, we're done with that. So if I pan back out to my UI folder, I can go in my V1 and I see that. Now any iterations that I make and I present to a client, what I do is after that, um, significant release and say there's uh, a good amount of edits to go, I'll copy that folder so that I always have it and just make a V2. Oop, not V12, but V2. <laughs> so basically what that shows is that, okay, if somebody were to take this folder and they need to know where we are with this, version one already happened. Version two, because there is one, must be the latest. So I don't have to write final, I don't have to write latest or anything like that. So now we have that, boom, we're good. So again, a note about highlighting and things like that. Um, I don't really think you need to highlight anything, uh, especially you can do that pretty easy here in the Mac um, OS. It, it really doesn't give much um, significance, especially when I think of green as go and red as stop, um, or you know, red as something danger or important or something like that. Uh, it gets pretty confusing unless you have a system that you work with uh, where green is always the one to use or something like that. So again, I would try to stay away from that. I try to always stay away from dates and things like that. All right, well, seems like we got a decent grasp on our file structure. Um, name your files accurately, name them pretty concisely if you can. I would even suggest going back into your stock folder, renaming these into something useful, like uh, 
coffee ice cream and strawberry ice cream, something that you don't have to sit there and thumb through every one of your um, numerically named files to try to find out what you want. So again, we're starting on a good foot by having everything in proper order and proper organization. Next time, we're going to open up a PSD and try to go through some of the things internally that you can organize better.